So on page 236, let's go to 10 1. Uh, a cowboy is riding his horse at a fast gallop. Suddenly the horse plants his feet and stops. As a result, the cowboy falls off the horse. Will the cowboy fall forward, backward, left, or right? Forward. forward. Uh, my horse likes to get scared of things and go in reverse and sideways. And so I end up, as my horse, the last time it was a squirrel in the tree over our heads. And so when she heard the squirrel, she went back in this way. So guess where I ended up? Here. Right? Because I just slid off as she went back in this way. Um, I had a girlfriend who, her pony did this every time she rode him, and I could never understand why she bothered to gallop that pony. But she would always gallop that pony, and I'd stay back. I'd just go, okay, go ahead. I'm just going to wait. And she'd start galloping that pony, and as soon as she got comfortable, that pony would go sideways. He would act like he was afraid of something, and I mean literally just go sideways, and my friend would just keep going. Okay? And, and that was Every time she rode that pony, his name was Redneck. I do not know why. He was a beautiful strawberry roan. That's why his name was Redneck, because he, he was like white with a red mane and tail. He was gorgeous, and a red head and red socks. He was gorgeous. But what a little rat. Every time she rode him, he would just go whoop, and she'd go whee. <laughs> so anyway, Newton's first law. That velocity will continue unless it's acted upon by an outside force. 10-2. Um, a car is traveling down the road at 30 miles per hour. A truck driven by a reckless driver comes up from behind with a speed of 50 miles per hour. The truck slams into the car, the back of the car. Will the passengers, um, car's passengers be flung forward or backward in the seat? Backward, because they're moving at 30 miles an hour, and the truck is moving at 50. So they're going to continue at the velocity of 30, even though they're being pushed to 50. So they're going to go back like this in the car. 10-3, um, a bomber is dispatched to drop a bomb on a factory. The figure below illustrates three points at which the bomb could be dropped as the plane travels from left to right. Assuming the bomb has no propulsion system of its own, at which point should the bomb be dropped? Dropped. Which one, guys? A. A. Because remember, the bomb is going, to, here's, say here's the, the building. The bomb is going to continue at the same velocity as the plane. So it's going to go like this. So you better drop it back here. Because if you drop it here, it's not going to go straight down. It's going to continue at the velocity with the plane. So the answer would be A. Thank you. Um, OK, let's see. And then it mentioned here that the reason you get dizzy when you spin is because, and as kids, we all like to spin, didn't we? We like to spin, and then you'd stop, and you go, woo, woo. OK, and then the reason is because there's fluid in our semicircular canals in our ears. So as you spin, the fluid starts to spin. And then as you stop, your eyes tell your brain they've stopped. But your ears go, uh-uh, and they keep doing this. And so that's what makes you feel all, Ew. okay? All right, then we get to friction. And we have another experiment, yet another experiment. In the freezer, in the kitchen, there is a bowl on the right-hand bottom of the side of the freezer of just a few ice cubes. Would you please bring that for me? Thank you so much. Okay, guys, we're going to try to do this one up here. All right, we're supposed to place the board on the ground. Well, this is going to be our ground, okay? Use your hand to note how rough the surface is. Feel it. Don't get a splinter. Okay, just feel it. It's rough. Yeah. Right? It's rough. Okay. Uh, put the ice cube. <clears throat> so here's our ice cube. Thank you for getting that for us. Our ice cube, we have a block of wood. Block of wood. It's kind of like a race. Um, we have a small flat rock. It's like a piece of uh, countertop. Okay. And if we use the flatter side, let's see how it happens. Um, and then, Okay, is that all we're supposed to be putting on there? At one end of the board, right? Flip the page. Oh, thank you. I'm missing the eraser. Thank you so much. There's our eraser. Okay, maybe we should do it this way so you guys can see better. Okay, now you're going to measure. Okay? From here to the floor? Nope, hang on. Okay. What we're supposed to do is it says, begin the experiment by lifting the board um, as you... You know, we're lifting the board. Leave the other side on the floor. Continue to lift the board until you have lifted it high enough 
to stick a book under it. At that point, stick the book under the end of the board and allow the board to rest there as illustrated. Now, whether or not any of the objects begin to slide down the board, if so, measure the height. Okay, continue to increase the height of the stack one book at a time. Each time, check for object sliding. Um, then we're going to do it again. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to go up slowly. I'm not putting books under it, so we're just going to go up slowly. And we're going to see when somebody starts to slide. You guys start thinking about who you think is going to slide first. I'm going to move this back so it doesn't just fall off, okay? Think the ice is? Can I stop it? it? Sure. Wow, we're getting up pretty high, huh? Okay, measure that. Measure that. Wow. Okay. So measure that to the top here. You know what? How are we going to do this here? Try to measure that straight across to what that would be at the top. Just, yeah. Yep. Yep. Try to come across. What is Just that? Just over a foot. An inch okay. over a foot. Good. So 13 inches, right? Okay. And everybody remember those two went first. Okay. So we saw that first went the wood and then the ice then the rock, then the eraser. Now we're supposed to sand it. There it is. We're supposed to sand it. Oh. We're trying to comply. 13 inches was when the other one first went, right? So let's put it back on here. There we go. Okay. Let's see if that made any difference at all. Wow, it sure made a mess. <sighs> okay. Go up slowly. Yeah, I would have thought the ice would have gone first. Because it should have made a water path that it was able to slide along. Don't see a lot of change, do you? Not at all. Did you pull all the dust off? No. <sighs> wow. Back up. I don't want you getting this in your face. <sighs> hey, you know what? Let's use a paper towel. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, let's see. <laughs> Try it again. I'm not big on dirt. Okay, ready? All right, let's try it. See if the dust made a difference. Whoa. Oh my goodness. Is it worse? I think so. Maybe you're supposed to use a different grade of sandpaper. <laughs> all right, at least the ice wet first. Boy, they all kind of go ahead and see how, <laughs> how high are we this time. This one right here. Yeah, so like, what is that? Oh, it's at a foot. Is yeah. it at a foot? It looks like it's a little less. Thank yeah. you. Thank you very much. It's not a lot less, but it's a little less. Okay. Thank you, sir. What we were supposed to see, we were supposed to see that after we sanded it, that it went down a little sooner. And it did slightly. Slightly. Okay. I would have had to sand it a whole lot more for it to get slick. And, oh. Hmm. But if we had an example of something slick that we could do it on, it would show us how fast it would go down. Yeah, but I can't pick a table up. There is no way. Hey, that's a great idea. Let's do that because that's about two feet, right? Let's try this. Let's see if I can do it without killing anything. Okay. And I should probably get Nick to measure the distance of the bottom of the cart will tell us the distance of the top of the cart. And if you've had geography, 
ge geometry, you would know that because it's all parallel lines. And so if we do it, you can measure it. If you don't, just let it go. Trust me on this, OK? Yay. We're going to try it again using this. Size, please. Thank you. We're going to see, and that was a very good idea. This is a slicker surface, so this would uh, serve, thank you very much, this would serve as um, a very well-polished piece of wood, wouldn't it? Okay, so let's see. Oh, well, I'm not even up six inches, am I? And it already started to move a little. So I'm, I'm probably up about six inches. Let's see. Now the water, uh, the ice actually did go pretty fast. Wow, this is still not going very quickly on the others. Oh, and that time the eraser went. The rock's still sitting there. Okay, the rock's not leaving. Okay, so we did see that it might have gone a little bit faster, but wow. It's like a slippery surface, so the ice is easier for the ice. Well, actually, that's a good guess. The ice. Let's talk about that. The ice actually makes a water path, and then that water path allows it to slide along over the surface so that it's not dealing with the friction, and that's exactly why it's dangerous to drive on wet roads. Because on wet roads, your tires have trouble grasping the, the road, and therefore you can slip, and just hydroplane is what it's called, and you can get in all sorts of accidents and trouble. So that can be a problem. In the case of tires, friction and traction are a good thing keeps you on the road where you're supposed to be. Um, <clears throat> but what we're supposed to see there is that the different things come down at different times because if you look on page 239, friction is actually due to the fact that no surface on a molecular level is, is actually smooth. All surfaces have a certain amount of bumps to them. And so on that smaller level, the bumps actually kind of get caught down inside of each other. Also, the closer they are together, the molecules actually have attractions for one another. And so when they can get closer together, they have more of an attraction for one another, which causes more friction. And that's part of the reason why it's harder to get something started moving than to keep it moving. Have you ever noticed that? If, you, if it's really, really hard to get it started moving, but once it's moving, then it's not quite as hard to keep it moving. That's because when you're getting it started moving, it's called static friction because it's sitting still. Um, there's more ability for the little grooves to get, get down into each other, and then there's more of an ability for the attraction between the molecules in each of them to attract one another and hold it there. Once you've got it moving, well, then it's easier to keep it moving. Okay? It always makes me think of one of my dead cars. Anyway. Um, okay, so on page 240, it defines for us there that friction is a force that opposes motion resulting from the contact of two surfaces. 10.4 um, says, look at the situation illustrated in 10.3. Suppose you wanted to push the box across, am I in the right place? Yep. Suppose you wanted to push the box across the floor if the box was filled with something really heavy. Would you have to overcome more or less friction compared to the situation if the box was filled with something light? There'd be more friction, wouldn't there, if there was something really heavy? Um, and then 10.5, suppose you were to drop an object from the top of a building and measure its speed and the constant, measure its speed the instant before it hits the ground. Suppose further that you did the experiment twice, once on a clear sunny day and once with a thick fog. Uh, would there be any difference in the speed of the object? There should be. It should be slower on the day with the, the thick fog or faster on the day with nothing because it's, it's got something to deal with the friction on and cut through. Okay, um, so that's Newton's first law. The first law is that velocity does not change unless an outside force is acted upon it, uh, acts upon it. The second law, <laughs> the second law says when an object is acted upon by one or more outside forces, the force is equal to the mass of the object times the resulting acceleration. And you know what I want you to know for Newton's second law? Force equals ma. That's all. That's all I want you to know for it. Just like for acceleration, you are allowed to write the final velocity minus the initial velocity over the time. For force, for Newton's second law, just write force equals mass times acceleration. That's all you need to write for Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. Now, when we put units to that, okay, we already know that in the metric system, mass is measured in kilograms, and we learned in the last chapter that acceleration is meters per second squared in some direction, correct? And that's ugly, kilograms, mass, 
per second squared is ugly, so they gave it a new name. They call this a Newton. Now we just give it a big N. We call it a Newton. Makes me think of Fig Newton cookies. Um, there are other force measurements. Weight is actually a measurement. When we measure ourselves in pounds, that's actually a force measurement. Whereas if somebody measures themselves in kilograms, that's a mass measurement. Let's not go there because pounds actually takes into account the gravitational force of the Earth pulling on you. That's why. Okay? In physics, you'll have to deal with that if you ever take physics. Anyway, okay, so it tells us here that to hold one gallon of water takes 40 newtons. So newtons are not real, real strong. But the smaller unit, <coughs> which is a dyne, which is grams times centimeters per second squared, dynes actually, when a fly lands on your finger, that's a thousand dynes. So that's a really small unit, isn't it? Um, all right, so let's see how to do the math problems for this. What you, need, what you need to know is that the force, this, you need to know that force total, you may want to write this down, equals the mass times the acceleration. And that the force total also equals the force exerted Minus, that's exerted, okay? Minus the force of friction. In other words, the force exerted is either push or pull, exerted, pushing or pulling. And the friction is always going against the motion of the force. Friction is always going against the motion of the force. So, the first one, it says, uh, example on <clears throat> page 242. Uh, 10 one. A man's car was broken down and he pushed it to the gas station, ignoring friction. So we're up here. Ignoring friction, what is the total force in newtons? The man must push the car if it accelerates at 3.03 meters per second squared east. Well, you're just doing mass times acceleration, so it shows you that. You just plug in the mass times acceleration and that you multiply it together and that gives you the answer of the force total in newtons. Look at the next problem on page 243. Uh, it says, in order to clear an area, a construction worker, worker pushes on a large rock that is in the way. Once he gets the rock moving, it begins to accelerate at that meters per second squared to the north. If the construction worker is able to apply 400 newtons of force, what is the frictional force between the rock and the ground? Now that sounds extremely complicated, but let's just work this problem, okay? First, we know that the force total is ma. It equals mass times acceleration. The mass of the rock is 300 kilograms, and the acceleration is given to us at 0 0.12 meters per second squared, and the guy's pushing it north. Okay, um, it says to us the construction worker is able to apply, that's as the exerted, 400 newtons of force, and he's going north. We want to know what the frictional force is, so I'm going to put F of friction. Okay, that's how you would plug in for this. So then you would do the multiplication on this part, which is going to give you 36 newtons north. And then you have over here 400 newtons north minus the frictional force. So you know that if you solve for this, the difference between these two numbers is going to be what this is, isn't it? Right? So the difference between those two numbers is 364 newtons, and then the friction is always going to be in the opposite direction from the direction that you're exerting in. Okay? Always is going to be the opposite direction from what you're exerting in. Okay. Does everybody see how that works? So these are the two equations that you really need to work on these problems. All right? How far did y'all read? 44. So we're actually right where we're supposed to be? Is that correct? Okay. The, I, I, you know what? Let, I want to do one more problem with you because uh, I don't, he doesn't give you enough to practice on. So let's... Uh, here, let's try on page 253. 253. In order to get a 15 kilogram object moving to the west, a force of 25 newtons must be exerted. Once it's moving, however, the, no, that's not going to do it for us. We need something else. Hang on. 
Ugh, they don't have an example with just what we need. All right, well, you're going to have to learn about static friction and kinetic friction before you can do the rest of the problems. I'm sorry there's not an example problem other than the ones I showed you. Okay? All right, you guys okay? Okay.